and we're back. And as you can hear, we have Larry Ward on the line with us. And Larry is the founder of Stand with Tucker, as well as the Constitutional Rights PAC. And uh, just to introduce yourself here, Larry, uh, tell the folks a little bit about you. Sure, sure. The uh, uh, Stand with Tucker uh, Coalition, by the way, thanks for having me. The Stand with Tucker Coalition is a group of conservative organizations that we had put together when uh, Media Matters started calling for boycotts of, uh, <clears throat> of Tucker's advertisers, forcing a, uh, a bunch of uh, advertisers to start pulling their advertising budget from Fox and from Tucker based on something ridiculous, uh, something he said on a shock jock radio show 12 years ago uh, on Bubba the Love Sponge on the Howard Stern uh, serious radio channel. Um, and, and of course, you know, you're on a shock jock, Joe, you say shock jock things. And, uh, and of course they're trying to hold that against them, pretending that they're outraged in order to, uh, in order to silence him and to silence uh, his conservative voice. No, I, I realized that they, it came out of nowhere. I mean, he's been around for, quite honestly, Tucker has been around for quite some time. So it's not, he's not a new entity. But suddenly they came up with this from 12 years ago, as you mentioned, and started attacking him. Uh, so what, you obviously have been paying attention to Media Matters in many of your organizations. Uh, what motivated you to say, hey, let's make this organization, the Stand With Tucker, and... and take on media matters in this way well you, you you said it you said it earlier it came out of nowhere but it really didn't um it came out of a well orchestrated scam it's a it's a it's a strategy uh where uh media matters gins up this fake outrage uh amongst the uh liberal psychos and <clears throat> what they do is they they then uh point the spear at whatever target uh, that they're going for. Now, what's really interesting here, and why I call it a scam, it's not just to, to gin up this fake outrage, because there's nobody calling. I mean, let's be real. There's nobody calling advertisers, demanding them to, uh, to stop advertising on Tucker. I mean, the, the liberals don't even watch Fox News, so they don't even know who's really advertising on Tucker Carlson. It, it, what, what, what's, uh, what's going on here is... Uh, just like the way Obama, in during his administration, weaponized government by putting uh, politically motivated uh, advocates, his advocates, in power positions amongst all the bureaucracies. So you got Lois Lerner at the uh, at, at the, the IRS. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the IRS. You've got what you know. You've got guys like Jim Comey and the, and the FBI. You've got Loretta Lynch over in, in, in the Attorney General's office, and he weaponized the government to go after uh, conservatives and, and go after any kind of conservative voice or conservative value. And it's not just the First Amendment, it's the Second Amendment. You know, uh, and, and so the same, they, they used a program called Operation Choke Point, by which they used um, banks to essentially choke the financial life out of gun manufacturers that they didn't like, yes. that were making big, scary guns. So what, what's happened is after, the, uh, um, after Obama left office, they took this Operation Choke Point to another level, and they started placing people that were in the administration, people that are directly tied to George Soros, in high-level, um, C-level executives' uh, positions in these major corporations that have control over advertising budgets, and people on the board. And... What we did is we went and we asked a couple of uh, investigative journalists to take a look independently at all of the advertisers that backed out of Tucker's show. And every single one of them, every single one, um, had people on the board or people at a C-level executive position that are directly tied either to Media Matters, to George Soros, to the Tides Foundation, uh, to the Obama administration or to the Hillary Clinton uh, foundation. Wow. That's, that's incredible that there would be people that ingrained in each of, and every one of those organizations. Uh, and 
I just haven't even seen that breaking news. Um, but I'm not surprised by it. I can't say I'm surprised by it. But we've seen. Well, go ahead. They're they're fighting this battle at a whole nother level, and and as conservatives, we have to wake up. And what's happened? You see the result of it everywhere. You see not only just people fighting uh, with Tucker Carlson, which is why we decided, um, you know, Tucker was a popular guy. This was a good place for us to start this fight. Um, but it's not just it's not just with uh, with, with Tucker Carlson. It's it's uh, people are being deplatformed. They're losing their merchant credit card service, so they can't accept credit cards. You know whether you like them or hate them. Alex Jones was deplatformed from every social media account, banks, email services, anything related to Silicon Valley, all in the same day. That doesn't happen by accident. Um, and he was basically the test case, in my opinion. And and now they're doing this. To, they're going to just go one one at a time. Whether it's Tucker or Janine Pirro or Sean Hannity. They're going to go person by person by person, uh, at point the spear, and awaken what I'm calling these liberal sleeper cells which live in, in corporate America. Well, you mentioned something that, that's very much in, in the news, at least that I follow and that I've been speaking about, the deprivation of the First Amendment rights. We've seen Twitter, Facebook, Google. They've already admitted that they have algorithms out there that actively suppress the free speech of people on the right, whether you're conservative, libertarian, or conservative, uh, or re Republican, and they just deny us that access. But you're saying, and we're seeing with Tucker, and we saw it with Alex Jones, where you're seeing a very individualized attack. Uh, and that's obviously something that has to concern every conservative out there. But I have to ask a question. Uh, because you mentioned Tucker, he's a very well-known, he's a public figure nationally, uh, and he, right now he seems to have survived this. And, and Alex Jones initially survived as well. Uh, but many people would say, well, the, the issue's over, we've won. What would you say to them? Oh, no, we're, no we haven't won anything. Uh, because the, the, they're, not, they're not giving, they may have retreated from Tucker for a moment, um, but uh, uh, but I don't think for a second that the liberals are giving up uh, even even a, an inch of this play. Um, and and a matter of fact, I think they're getting more and more ingrained in corporate America. And, and you know what kind of government comes out of of uh, you know politically motivated uh, companies that are ingrained with the with the uh, federal government? You get the kind of government that that Hitler and Mussolini ran. Um, and, and so that, that's really the danger here, is these corporations are essentially legislating uh, from, from their boardroom, and they're creating rules for the rest of us uh, if we, if we want to use their products and services. Another good example is what Citibank has done in terms of uh, you know, the Second Amendment. Citibank said, if you want to buy a gun with a Citibank credit card, you have to go through their background check. And just think about that for a moment. We can't get, you know, we, we stopped the background check, uh, Bill, uh, you know, after, after Newtown. Congress won't touch it again. So instead of, in, instead of Congress doing it, they're having the banks uh, dictate uh, the, the, the Second Amendment. And, you know, we started a company called Gun Dynamics, which is a, a crowdfunding platform for gun inventors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know, I can't tell you how many uh Gun manufacturers and inventors have come to us and said, not only can't we crowdfund on these Silicon Valley companies, we can't get credit card processing. We can't get a loan to start our, to start our um, manufacturing process to build you know, prototypes and, and bring stuff to market. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's an actual gun or a scope or some smart gun technology. Anything related to, the, to, to a gun or to the Second Amendment is being choked. And it's not being done at the federal level at this point. It's being done in the corporate level. Okay, let me ask uh, about this. And I have the site for Gun Dynamics up. It was part of the research I did when we were getting ready for the show. Um, and I do see that, and I do want people to know, and I'm just bringing it up on the screen right now for them, uh, you are the chief marketing officer for Gun Dynamics. Um, yes. Among some of the other things that you do. Uh, 
obviously there's the red flag legislation that's out there. We see a lot of second, and that's sweeping the nation as well as in front of uh, the Senate right now, and that's being talked about. Uh, do you see that uh, that this censure by banks and other organizations as part of that same movement with the red flags and, and the calls by uh, Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens to try and remove the Second Amendment? Or is this a part of the censorship of just the right in general? Or is it something else? Oh, no. It, they, you know, the left hates guns. And you know why they hate guns? Because they want to be able to control us. And they can't control us if we have the ability to defend ourselves at the end of the day. So they, the left despises guns. And the red flag laws, I've been talking about this for a very long time. So have I. Um, the red flag laws are, in, in one respect, understandable. You know, if somebody is, is uh, terribly mentally disturbed, you want to, you know, make sure that that person doesn't have an arsenal. Um, now, that being said, the problem is, is the left and the way they're trying to position these red flag laws in these states are they're trying to do it without due process. Now, here, here's, here's the problem with red flag laws is red flag laws say that if somebody's really uh, unstable or crazy, they shouldn't have they shouldn't have a gun and the state should be able to go in there and take confiscate their guns. Well, you know, at at the end of the day, who determines who's crazy? And if someone is actually that dangerous that you can't trust them with weapons, they need to be committed to an institution and lose not only their their uh, uh, their uh, their arms, but they need to go have their due process. But if they're that dangerous and it comes out that they, they could be a harm to themselves or others, they need to be committed. And the problem is, is we don't we don't care about. Uh, we actually don't want to even think about committing people anymore. Uh, there's not enough beds in the in the in these hospitals, and and there's no real appetite for for you know actually taking care of the uh, the mentally ill. So what happens is, um, it's not really that they want to uh, take guns out of mentally uh, people with uh, mental health problems or get them off the street, so to speak. What they really want to do is control who has guns and who doesn't. Um, you know, certainly I've been called crazy uh, more than probably a thousand times by liberals on social media because I have a conservative point of view. Uh, are they going to determine that I can't have a firearm? How about a returning veteran uh, who, who we trust in the field to protect themselves and their, and their, and their brothers and sisters, uh, 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 you know, in, in battle? But when, when they come home, they're not trusted because they, they, they went to see a doctor, they won't be trusted uh, to, to protect themselves and their families. So, you know, the, the red flag laws have, have many, many, many issues, many problems. And, and again, it's, it's, it's just a means to, uh, to take away our rights. And they're, they're taking away uh, left and right. Christine Amapour on, on, on CNN yesterday, uh, the day, uh, day before her interviewing uh, Jim Comey, mm -hmm. Ask Jim Comey a question. Do you regret? Do you regret not shutting down the hate speech in the 2016 elections when they were chanting "Lock her up"? Right, right. I saw. That. I mean, could you imagine? This is this is a woman who has a show on PBS, public public broadcasting. I've actually been on her show. Um, has a, has a show uh, a. a uh, a show on PBS and, and is a CNN uh, correspondent, and she's asking the question that should should we have stopped forcibly by the federal government stopped quote unquote hate speech? Well, no, because the First Amendment protects hate speech, and and, and anybody that says anything different is is incorrect. That's what the First Amendment protects. It doesn't protect polite speech. It doesn't protect friendly speech. It protects what you what is considered, um, you know, politically incorrect or hate speech. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't need to be corrected. Well, protected. I, right, as I like to say, it protects the speech of the other person. The person uh, speech I don't like. 
not this, it, a lot of younger people, millennials in particular, tend to think it's, well, it's to protect the speech I like. No, it is expressly for the speech you don't like because there's always someone else who doesn't like your speech. So I, I'm a big, big First Amendment advocate. I agree with you completely. And, 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 and that, comes back to, that comes back to why they want to shut down conservative voices. They want to shut down conservative voices like Tucker Carlson because they can't win a debate. So they label it hate speech and they label it, uh, you know, inappropriate and they try and get advertisers to pull the money so they can't, they don't have a platform to get their voice out because they can't win the debate. Because Tucker Carlson, night after night after night, lets liberals talk. He, it's a very, very uh, interesting dynamic on his show. He lets liberals speak and they always make fools of themselves. Um, <laughs> So he when he when they come in and they try to debate, they look stupid, and you know everybody everybody knows Tucker for making those faces at them. But he lets them speak. He doesn't call them racist. He doesn't call them bigots. He doesn't call them sexist. He doesn't make fun of them. He just looks incredulously like that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard, uh, and and it's so, very effective. Well, sometimes it is. Uh, I remember when he had State Senator uh, Kevin Parker on. I'm in New York State. And uh, he was trying, State Senator Kevin Parker was trying to pass a bill that um, you would, it would require you to be able to get a firearm license. You would have to give the government your password to all of your social media, access to three years of your social media content and your, uh, and your Google searches for a year. Basically, you're giving up your right to privacy, your Fourth Amendment, so that you might be able to execute your Second Amendment because you still would have to be approved for the permit. And it was it was great to watch Tucker talk to him about that. And that was obviously one of the issues that I follow a lot. So I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying there, how he does that. Uh, now, and I know we, I, we don't have a lot of time here. We've got about three minutes. I did want to mention now, I know that you have the Political Media Incorporated. And it, and I did want to ask, because you have uh, the Constitutional Rights PAC, uh, I know, no, no, that collected uh, something around a quarter of a million dollars in 2016, which you used in um, trying to get the message out with many candidates. You have the Gun Dynamics uh, you have Stand with Tucker. Uh, are these all under that one umbrella, or is it all individualized? Are you looking at a one by one approach, or is it an overall? It, it's a it's a uh, it's a disease called serial entrepreneurship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the political media is our is our advertising agency okay. um, that we've been running since 2002, helping candidates, causes, and media companies on the right uh, reach reach their audience and. And get get elected and and uh, you know fundraise and do all that kind of stuff. Right. Constitutional Rights Pack was formed in in 2013 right. uh, simply because I is funny story. I literally raised my third story window. I, my office used to be right between the NR the the NRA lobby office and the RNC. And two days after Newtown, um, the the left crazies were screaming, "Shame the NRA!" So I lifted up my third story window and screamed, arm the teachers. By the way, that's where that came from. Uh, and okay. Arm the teachers, arm the principals. And I looked down and there were some cameras pointed up at, at me. And, and, and uh, so I figured I'm in for a penny, in for a pound. I called for, the, uh, uh, I, I called for an event called Gun Appreciation Day. And that's how Constitutional Rights Pact was born, was defending you know, our constitutional rights and particularly our Second Amendment right. Ah, I didn't know that. Okay. And I'm sure you don't get a lot of uh, the questions about some of your associated groups, but I, I like to do my homework and I pay attention to who I'm talking to. Uh, but I think a lot I appreciate of... appreciate that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people will be interested in, obviously, all of these, because as you mentioned, they're all connected. They're not individual issues because at the root of it all is a censorship, is uh, a silencing of voices and... and a, a restriction on our freedom to choose. And I think that's very important and, to, Moina, to point out. Go ahead. And the most important thing we have to understand is we've been fighting, you know, and when I say we, I mean conservatives have been fighting problems in the federal government, um, Hollywood, the media, 
And now we have to add and we have to pay attention every single day to what's going on in, cor in corporate America. And we have to shine a light because sunlight is the best disinfectant. We have to shine a light at the individuals who have connections to Soros, Obama, Hillary Clinton, and all the left-wing uh, wackos and Media Matters and SPLC and, and such. And if they have the connections and they're pulling uh, advertising, now you know why. Now you know how this game is being played. And, and we have to get out in front of it and stop it because the, the, the uh, weaponization of corporate America is very dangerous. I agree with you. That's, the implications of that are far, far too, uh, too devastating. Too, if fingers reach everywhere in our lives, it's definitely, uh, it makes government individually oppressive. And that's a problem. Uh, I do want to thank you. Uh, we're just out of time here. But I do thank you for taking the time. And I do want to follow up with you, especially as we're going into 2020, of course. And obviously, there's a lot of issues that are on the table right now. Ron Wyden is now trying to tax our un, uh, capital gains that have been unrealized. I was just talking about that. Uh, we have gun rights, the red flag legislation. There's a lot of issues that you're addressing and also with individuals like Tucker. And I'm concerned about it because it affects me as well at one point and, and the rest of us here who try to get messages out that are more right-leaning. And I think it's important, the work that you're doing there. So I definitely want to stay in touch with you on that. Is there any final, uh, we've got about a minute there, any final thought that you would want to share with everyone? Just have everybody go to standwithtucker.com, sign the petition, and you know, let's stand, stand up against what's going on uh, with the censorship of conservative voices. Absolutely. And I'll make sure that uh, we have it on the screen, but I'll also have it attached in the description so people will be able to know exactly where to go with that. Uh, so I do want to thank you for being with us today. And uh, Larry, I hope you're going to have a great day. Keep up the fight. Hey, thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, folks. So we've got the last minute here. We're going to be just going forward. Uh, I just want to remind you, remember, we're on every Tuesday, every Thursday at 1 p.m. On Saturdays, we're on from 12 until 2. On this Saturday, April 6th, it's my birthday. And so I'm going to try and do something special for that. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with. I do want to mention as well, if you notice me looking around, I put down my glasses. I have no idea where they are. I can barely read. <laughs> I can't really read my screens here. So uh, that's why, if you noticed, I was looking around. Uh, I was trying to find my glasses so I could read my notes. Uh, but we enjoy always being here with you. We always enjoy the fact that you've listened in. I, I look forward to your comments about everything that Larry had to say uh, about his Congressional Rights Pact, the Stand with Tucker, uh, to the gun dynamics. Um, and everything that we're trying to do here because it's always important to get your feedback because it's your government. This is our country together, and together we can make that difference. So I do want to do that. Uh, other than that, we've got about a minute and a half, maybe a little bit less. So what do you think about Senator Ron Wyden? What do you think about the capital gains on profits that you don't have, that just exist on paper? That's a big question. Let's all talk about that. Let's all wonder about that. Uh, let's all give some feedback on that. And I will be following up with Senator Ron Wyden about that. But if you haven't had the opportunity yet, I want to uh, also remind you that if you haven't uh, checked us out on YouTube, you can go right over here and you'll be able to see uh, some of the other videos that we've done, some stuff you might like. You can go and check right up there and you'll be able to see the latest video that we've done. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, but more important than anything else, please leave your comments, tell us what you think, and we're always trying to improve. We look forward to being able to be better and better. With that, I wanna thank everyone and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday at 12 noon. Talk to you all again very soon.